I、uh, I've never thought about how to start this. <laughs> Should we say hi? <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Wait. Okay.、Uh, yeah, we can just say like you want to say like. Oh yeah, we can. Why did I have to roll? Hi, I'm Kenneth. And I'm Maya. Welcome to Journey to the Double Dock. We are incoming MD PhD students at Penn and Harvard MIT, and we wanted to create this channel to chronicle our training paths. We hope to share things that we learned along the way that we wish we had known, as well just as to be a general resource for those interested and passionate about science and medicine. So feel free to contact us at our Twitter handles or our email. We would love to hear what you want us to talk about, and so welcome to our channel, and hope you will join us on our journey. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh my god, like why are you talking? <laughs> Like your first impression. Hi everyone,、um, welcome back to our channel. So in this video, we want to discuss some common misconceptions about the physician scientist training path, especially in regards to MD PhD programs, and also share some examples of scenarios to help you figure out if an MD PhD is right for you. Absolutely, and we'll start with one of, in my opinion, is one of the most common misconception. About the MD PhD training path versus, for example, the MD training path.、Uh, many people know that the MD PhD、um, programs are often funded, and they give you stipend over the time that you are in the program. And so, some people、um, believe that doing an MD PhD allows you to go to med school for free, and that is a financial benefit or plus that should be persuasive in pursuing an MD PhD program. Which definitely makes sense, kind of on the surface. But another really important thing to consider is that that extra time that you're spending as an MD PhD, so usually an extra three to four years to actually get your PhD, will be time that down the road you could be earning an attending salary. So the point is that both an MD PhD and an MD path have both financial pros and financial considerations to take into effect. And definitely, even if you just were to pursue the MD track, if that's where you sort of feel like your interests are, you'll definitely pay back the loans and everything. But on the other side of the coin, if you are really certain that you want to go into maybe academic medicine or other sort of work that might not be as、um, financially lucrative as just clinical practicing, the flexibility of doing an MD PhD program is nice, but never at the expense of just doing an MD PhD to avoid accruing loans.、Um, if you don't really want to be a physician scientist at the end of the day. And so, for the rest of the misconceptions that we want to address, we will have guest vignettes that. Will allow us to talk through and dispel some other common misconceptions. I'm a premed, and as premeds do, I begin to work in the research project. My project examines how the NLRP3 inflammasome can be targeted to combat insulin resistance. I find the prospect of understanding how a mechanism of disease can lead to possible advances in treatment of disease really exciting. I believe that research will greatly empower me to care for patients. My primary motivation remains to be my desire to care for patients. I heard that MD PhDs tend to split their time 80/20 in the lab and clinic. Is applying for an MD PhD right for me? It sounds to me that a physician scientist career can be really rewarding and fulfilling your situation. In fact, the majority of physician scientists are not splitting their time in the clinic and in the lab 20/80.、Um, that is a really common misconception. Physician scientists fully exist on a continuum of any mix of clinical and research com、uh, commitments. And we will link an article below that details how、um, surveyed MD PhDs that are currently in their career are splitting their time. With that being said, completing an MD PhD program is not the only way to become a physician scientist. For example, HST is meant to train physician scientists and physician engineers who may be pursuing either an MD or an MD PhD. The Physician Scientist Incubator Program at Pittsburgh explicitly trains and supports MD only. Students and trainees for careers as physician scientists. Programs such as that at Pittsburgh are currently part of a broader funding effort to increase more non-MD PhD physician scientists. Specifically,、um, it's funded by the Physician Scientist Institution Award from the Borough's Welcome Fund, which we will link, which we will link below so you can read more about and the various institutions that have received funding to support and train MD-only physician scientists. As well as we'll link an article about how. 
the broader medical community and scientific community need to recognize and support diverse physician scientist paths. I'm a computer science major who has become interested in the applications of CS to human health. I worked on projects mining electronic health records and studying cancer genomics, and I love seeing how computer science can be translated to directly help others. I'm pretty sure I want to pursue a PhD in CS so that I can complete a research thesis and take advanced coursework in computer science. Since I'm interested in medical problems, I'm now considering whether I should apply to an MD-PhD program instead. I don't really see myself practicing medicine in the future, but I think that the clinical training might help my research. Is an MD-PhD the right fit for me? You seem really passionate about bioinformatics research, which is awesome. I'm also really interested in that intersection of CS and biology. Um, but with that said, it doesn't necessarily seem like you're actually interested in practicing as a physician since you don't really seem to be interested in seeing patients. But um, on the other hand, you are really passionate about working on translational projects and you want to learn more about human biology as a way to better inform your research rather than to inform a clinical practice. So if that is the case, I would suggest that you seek a bioinformatics PhD programs or even pure CS programs. Um, in either case, such programs will allow you to pursue your main interest in research while still giving you the flexibility to take courses in human health and biology, either directly as part of a bioinformatics PhD curriculum or something you do on the side as part of a pure CS curriculum. Um, you might also look into programs like GEMS, which is the Graduate Education and Medical Sciences program, um, which allows MIT PhD Pro, uh, PhD students in programs like computational systems biology or health sciences and technology to take a select number of courses with medical students, which is really nice because they're sort of designed to help people who really want to do good translational research and really want to make sure that they understand human health, but who don't ultimately want to become a physician. Um, which I think ties really nicely into the last point that I would say. Um, science and research, as I'm sure you already know, is very collaborative. And so you'll definitely end up working with physicians and physician scientists and whoever in your later career. And just as you can bring expertise um, in your field, being a graduate trained um, scientist, being someone who pursued a PhD in computer science or some offshoot of that field, they'll also bring expertise in about dealing with patients and other more clinical concerns. And that can lead to really awesome research that one personal alone couldn't do, even if they were to be someone who is trained as an MD and a PhD. Um, the last thing that I want to say is that even though in this case, um, you weren't necessarily interested in seeing patients, if you do feel like you're watching this video and you are someone who's really interested in maybe CS but also seeing patients, you can definitely pursue an MD-PhD in computer science. Um, I think one big misconception about MD-PhD programs is that they only train people in very classical basic science fields like neuroscience or virology, but many MD-PhD programs also support students in pursuing less traditional fields, ranging from computer science to anthropology to health management or education. So there really is a program that can fit a variety of different interests. It just really comes down to you figuring out what's most important to you. I love research and particularly computational neuroscience research. I'm especially interested in how advances in computational neuroscience are now affecting neurosurgery, and I would love to become a neurosurgeon one day as well. However, I've heard there's no point getting an MD-PhD if you want to pursue surgery, since the combined training path would be so long. I don't want to be in school forever, but I also think my career would be most rewarding if it included both science and medicine. Is an MD-PhD right for me? While surgeons and procedure-based physicians have been historically underrepresented, among basic physician scientists, there are surgical specialties that have robust representation of MD PhD trainees. In fact, in 2018, neurosurgery was among the specialties that had the highest percentage of matched MD PhD graduates. That year, 14% of matched neurosurgery residents had an MD PhD. With that being said, surgical specialties do have demands that becoming a surgeon scientist will require you to mold around, whether that be how you split your time or the research projects you choose to commit to. So reaching out to current surgeon scientists and trainees will be important to find out more if the MD-PhD is right for you. We have linked a couple of articles that are helpful reading for you to get started below. Ultimately, the most general advice we can give you about how to know if the MD-PhD prof is right for you is to ask if the following are true for you. You really want that formal research training that the PhD provides, 
but you want it at a time where you're not having to balance or juggle clinical duties at the same time. With that, you also have more dedicated time and opportunity to apply for grants, and we'll just have more training time to um, take more advanced coursework or to pursue research questions that you find very compelling. Um, another big thing is that you feel like you can't live without both seeing patients and doing research. So if both of those things are really important to you and you really want that formal research training outside of also balancing physician duties, an MD-PhD is probably a pretty good pick for your career interests. Um, and finally, you're okay with losing lifetime income earnings. You're going to be in training for a while relative to your MD-only colleagues. And if they go into practice full time, obviously they'll be able to earn more income over their lifetime than you will be. Also, um, one more thing we want to note is that in this video, we really focus on sort of professional motivations to pursue an MD or MD-PhD or PhD, but we also wanted to take the time to say that doing an MD-PhD is a really long time commitment. Um, being a physician is in general, but especially an MD-PhD. Um, so you should definitely also consider factors external to your career ambitions, such as plans to start a family, um, personal life, how long you think you'd be happy being in school versus sort of getting more out there into the, you know, quote unquote, real world and getting started. Um, and make sure that the MD-PhD path is kind of conducive with those other goals. Um, but, you know, the last thing that we'll end on is saying that whatever decision you ultimately make, there's definitely going to be on and off ramps. And there are definitely people who do pursue an MD-PhD and decide to practice full time, people who pursue an MD, become physician scientists, and even PhDs who end up deciding to pursue an MD-PhD and go back to medical school. So take time to think about this decision. Don't take it lightly. But at the same time, don't feel like this is your only chance to kind of figure out what you want to do for the rest of your life and you're locked in. Um, there's always a way to go after what you want. Um, so, you know, we're definitely here to help to encourage you to pursue what you're most interested in. We're also here to let you know that it's very nervous, it's very common to be nervous and not be entirely sure about whatever path you're pursuing. Um, and there's definitely always gonna be ways to work around that and find a career that's most fulfilling for you in the long term.